Hey everybody, I am Impella Joe. This is Impella Jen that's joining me, Jen Waddell. <laughs> so, we're going to do three quick components here and kind of make this uh, brief and concise because I know you guys have already had a, a bigger overview, but I want to consolidate this into three components. One is, I'm going to give you a tip to tail of the Impella catheter. You're looking at the Impella catheter, the working end goes into the heart and the back end connects off the table. Okay, so we're going to go through, that's number one, which I'm going to do in a second. Number two, I'm going to help you understand what it's doing when it's in the body. And then finally, we're going to go through the components of when you open the box, what will the components be, what goes on the field, and then we're going to have you guys actually do a setup as if there was an Impella patient here. Okay, so we got those the three objectives for today. All right, so number one, this is a ventricular assist device. All right, the whole goal is to get the device and the body and across the aortic valve. Notice the aortic valve is right here. The inlet sits mid-ventricle and the outlet sits up above the valve and it simply moves volume from the inlet to the outlet. So for normal heart, what's the cardiac output for normal heart? Normal healthy heart. 16, No, 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 I'll give you uh, three liters, five liters, seven liters, 10 liters per minute. As you sit here right now. Three, five, seven, or 10 liters per minute. If your heart is healthy. I would healthy, say five. That's a good guess. Five to seven. So the Impella family of products, we have the Impella 2.5, which unloads up to two and a half liters per minute, the Impella CP, which can do up to four liters per minute, and the Impella 5.0, which can do up to five liters per minute. All of them work the same way once it gets in the body. So that's why, basically, by definition, once it takes across the aortic valve and the propeller spins, it can pull volume from here to here, okay? So with that, what you have is you have a pigtail, Okay, it's going to come with a little cheater when we open the package up. You have the inlet. You have the, the this is basically the, 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 the device, the part that sits across the uh, aortic valve. And you'll notice that it's made out of nice now. Notice how it's flexible. So the valve can actually collapse around it and then mitigate, minimize the AI that happens in the valve opens and closes. And then you have the working part right here. This is where the propeller is and the motor, okay? So quick question, if blood's going to be pulled from here to here, what's going to protect the motor? How do we protect our motor? Flushing. Yeah, so somewhat of flush. So basically, if we know God not go to the back end, there's a working, this thing that's outside the body here, there's three components, I call it three P's, okay? The first is performance. So this is gonna have an electrical connection that allows the propeller to spin to create the drawing force. So all of them, and this, this power cable right here is gonna connect, and that's gonna give us all of our performance um, um, pieces. Make sense? Okay. The second is placement. Where am I? So this is like an A-line that communicates with a little bitty hole right behind the motor. If you were to look here, there's a little hole drilled in behind the motor. Mm -hmm. So right now, if that hole is sitting above the valve, it's going to transduce aortic waveform because this is sitting in the aorta. If it crosses the valve, it'll be an LV waveform. So it's basically a north-south device. Okay? So that's the second P which is, again, we said performance, placement, and then protection, right? So you've got the inlet, you've got a reservoir here, you've got a filter to make sure, basically, we're gonna bring in um, volume, like you said, flushing. We're gonna flush it with basically something that's thicker than blood. If you think about it, if this is gonna be pulled by blood, you say, how can we create a wall to protect it? Well, we need something thicker than blood. What substance, give me a substance that's thicker than blood. Dextrose. Boom. So we're gonna use dextrose. For your purposes, it's D5, right? And then we're gonna, now the heart might have a Can't blood pressure. With those hands. <laughs> yeah. Heart might have a blood pressure, right? So that dextrose just oozing in is not gonna help. You need to have a pressure behind it, right? For that, we have what's called a purge cassette, which is the device you guys are gonna set up, right? And that purge cassette basically is like a pump that can create a pressure for that dextrose to create that wall. So you have something thicker than blood at a pressure higher than normal blood pressure. Even a hypertensive patient might be what, 200? millimeters of mercury. So we're gonna maintain this between 300 and 1,000, okay? So you got higher pressure, so you can create that wall to protect the motor. And that's it. Basically, you have a device that, when it's spinning, it will perform. You can monitor where it is because of the A-line, and we're gonna protect the motor as it unloads blood, okay? So at the end of this, once we get it spinning, I'll help you guys understand these, these three P's, okay? So any questions on how it works, or what it is. All right, so with that, let's talk about the components when you ready to do this. So Kevin, you're gonna be Dr. Krauss. You're gonna say, let's get the Impella set up. 
Nice one, Miller. And we have two minutes to get it going. All right, here's the patient's heart. We're on the field. Let's do it. Okay, you're, you're scrubbed with Dr. Krause? Yeah. yeah. You're circulating, right? No. Who's circulating? I'm with yeah. Tracy. All right, Tracy, sir. So Tracy, you're gonna, all of these components are off the field. I'll help you. We'll set it up together. So see the CP box back there? See the box over there? So right now. CP. You see it. If I open this box, right? This is the components in the box. This is gonna come sterile, right? So can you hand that on to the sterile field, please? So this is not sterile. Once, once here, this is sterile. So this is a sterile field? Yes. Boom. Okay. Boom. All right. Now, with this portion here, what I like to do is open this up. And I want you to grab, just lift out. I wouldn't mind lift out. I'm hoping my plastic is set it down right there for a second. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Okay. And then the last one, go ahead and give him the hole and pump. So this would, this would actually this come out of the bottom. Yet. I know it. So, would open it? No, it would, okay. it would, you would hand it on the field. I know. Okay, so he'd right. open it on the field. Okay. Can I? Yes, you may. Leave it in the case, please. Just like that. Leave it in the case. Okay. Huh? No, no, no. This would have been. That's what would have been sterile. Okay. So okay. you would have basically opened the package up. He would have taken it out just like okay. that. Thank you. And then the sheet comes with a kit that actually has a super stiff wire in it and actually has dilators. Okay. So all this would be on the field right now. So now this is all on the field. Now here's the beauty of this, believe it or not, and I'm not gonna, it's gonna be tough, but I'm gonna attempt to shut up, okay? Because this interface that connects and runs it is so user friendly that it walks you through step by step how to make the connection. So the first thing, let me just give you a quick overview. All right? Cut it on. On this side, you notice that there's a little, see where it says door? Can you push that button right there? Go ahead and push, push it. Uh, a little sticky. Push it again, please. Okay, so that opens up where the purge cassette's gonna go. Okay, which is the device we're talking about right here. All right? Okay, it should just pop up. There we go. Okay, this side, notice that there's the black label, black button right here, there's a power button. All right? If I just do it like this, you heard a beep, right? But this is still yellow, so it hasn't powered up yet. You have to hold it for three to five seconds. So if you wouldn't mind pushing the button and holding it for three to five seconds, trust it. Keep holding Video. You're green. You. green, you can let go. Okay, and it's gonna power up just like a computer. Okay, so it's gonna take a few minutes to power up. So okay. we should do that when we're handing things off? Yes, so right at the same time, simultaneously, this should be powered up while this is going okay. on the field, right? So your patient, was, whether the patient's getting CPR or whether they're stable, this, and again, we're gonna do step by step. This can happen much faster, but for the sake of this training, we're gonna do it step by step. But what I want you guys to recognize is, without me being here, I could be on the phone, I could be in route, <laughs> but if you follow the steps on the console, there's a, a graphic here that literally shows you how to connect everything, okay? You have an apple, right? Huh? You have an apple? Uh-huh. We'll be, we'll be FaceTiming. <laughs> we can do that. Hey, Joe, what's up? We can do that. We do. Okay. Do. If you wouldn't mind, can you read what it says there? We have to quickly, once sheets is in place. Oh, has this console been upgraded? Recommend ACT above 250 seconds That's before? That's why I have to go back, bro. I don't know if this has been upgraded. You guys upgraded both, though. Yeah, but we didn't. Could you read it okay. again, Mike? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Here, hit start. Hit start. Hit start. I don't think this council's been upgraded. Let's see. Okay. That's all right. So, what does that say? Spike this equipment. All right. So, where are we going to get right there? So, basically, right now, what you would do is notice how this had this portion goes to the patient. See the little man? This portion goes oh, off the field. Okay. So, these two things should stay in the tray, okay? And this should come out. So right now, take this portion out of the tray. Mm -hmm. Leave it on your field. If you had a towel, do we have a towel or something? Mm -hmm. That's right, so fine. Just leave it. No, hand the hold. So right now, if your fingers, if your hands were bloody, so perfect, perfect. Here's your towel. Dude. No, I got it. I got it right here. Okay. So we're gonna take your towel. You're gonna take this. You're gonna first make sure that this is tight, because sometimes this is loose. This bifurcation. And you might notice the color connections here. You got red to red and yellow to yellow, right? Well, that comes all tangled like that. So you know, this is this is different. <laughs> Okay, so you can see where you got red and yellow are going to connect eventually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so no leave. So you could go, no, don't pre-connect it. You could pre-connect it if this was a, a STEMI case. You could connect everything. And you can also, you'll notice how one end connects to yours and one end hands off. But we're just going to go step by step. So go ahead and hand off the whole tray to, to Gary. The reason we have you doing it like this is that if your hands were bloody, instead of me putting blood on here and handing it to you, it comes off clean. 
Okay. So I want you to go ahead, Mike, and spike your bag. Oh, man. Oh, that's contaminated. Very good. Open the new one. Maybe that's contaminated. Oh, we don't need this. No, because I've already got it. I've already got it. Just like disconnect. See what? So all I did was, guys, I made this picture. Where do you get another one if it gets contaminated? It's in the bottom. We have extra in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably good. It's open? Okay. So you. So what would you guys do next? Hit next. Go ahead. Notice how it shows you a picture of the door? Okay. Notice how, notice how we have a reference here and a reference here. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering which way it goes in, just follow the guide here. You don't even have to get Bingo. Now look, that's the first one. Now wait, well, look what it shows you. Now see this part right here? It gives you a close-up. Can I show these guys something? Notice how this has a membrane on this side mm -hmm. and it has a finger slot on this side. See how that matches up, and it's telling you to go here and then slide it in the yeah. slot, and you want to do it until it clicks. And you made it, Mike? No. You're saying this side down? So take look at the picture. Look at the picture. There you go. I didn't hear no click. I didn't well, hear it. You should have heard it. It's just a click like, like that. Yeah, yeah. I was on that side. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. So that's done, and right now we're purging into here. Okay. Now you could, yeah, I just want to see, and you can connect those whenever you want. So whoa, once whoa, you click in, I'm watch this. I want to see purchase. the flush. No, I'll, you'll see it coming out. Just leave it laying there. Just okay, the now look what it's asking you to do. It's saying connect that cable and look at the picture. Purge fluid not detected. Uh, check clamp. clamp on fluid tubing. Uh, now look, now we did that on purpose. There you go. No, you were clamped. No, it was, it was like that. That's fine. No, you were clamped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should go now. See, you were clamped. So right now, it would, see how user friendly it is? It's, it's because we weren't getting any dextrose to come out here. It wasn't purging because we're clamped. Is it purging now? So you have to try to I don't see no darn purging. It should be coming. Either I, I need to get another. I need to get a fresh purge to set up. That my demo is gonna beat up. Okay. See how you're connected? Look at the picture. See where yours connects? Go ahead and connect it. Mm -hmm. And then it goes one way. See. Keep turning until it goes one way. Fluid bag is not inverted. I'm sure. Purge fluid bag is not oh, a bird. Check tell me my dog on purge because it's a piece of crap. Check again for purge fluid bag inspect. <clears throat> we have a disturbance in the force. No, this is, I think, my right. purge because it's a piece. Let me see if I got another one. What's the next step? It's, so she's connected her end. Look what it's showing you over here. Show everybody what you're doing here. So you can show the arrow, show them the arrow. Boom, perfect. Okay. Now wait, wait, let's take it step by step. Now look what, so, I mean, you could do this all at once, but I'm just showing. So now that it's gonna recognize that this is connected. Oh, you had to push it in. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, you wanna pull it out and push it in again? Just to see. Hey, does this have to it, be? It's just literally, you just pushed it in. Okay. Okay, now look what it's saying. It's saying snap on the little clip. See this little purge clip right here? Snap that onto there. See the little clip right there? Mm -hmm. Snap oh, perfect right there. Now look what it tells you. Can you read out loud, Michael? Putting in Pala Cathar using yeah, yellow and yellow, red, yellow, red, red to red. Yeah. Okay. Yellow, yellow, red, red. Actually, actually, that's the best. Does this have to be free of air? It, it, it actually, that's, it's free of air because it's, it's purging forward, so yes. I mean, prior to connecting it so to you. So should sense that. He did that already. He's, he's, he's going to sense it. There you go. Then here's your last step. Now, this is how you're going to make sure there's no air. It's going to ask you to squeeze, and he's doing it. There you go. So you went ahead of time, Rock. Uh, how do I know he's flushing? You can look right. Oh, see yeah. The, it's see coming. where it's coming you're out right there? You're going to wait until you hear a beep. Look, hear a beep? That's the beep, so you can look over there. So pause right there, guys. It's so set up. Right. Believe it or not, you just this set this up. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay, pause for a second. Notice how this walks you through without me being here. Okay. You connected all the components on the sterile field. Any questions? See how simple this is? Okay, now it's literally ready to go to the patient's body, but the computer here wants to know how big is the bag that you hung, right? It wants to know, so go ahead and so hit edit. Let's change it to 1,000. Edit. So now that that's highlighted, you have two options. You can either select here or you can hit the silver button there. So hit, hit the silver button, go ahead and punch that. Push it in. Right. Okay, now look at your options. That's how big, you can have a 50. Oh. All right, so that's the leader. So now highlight the concentration, that's it. All right, good, so that's now slide it down to, you can either go arrow or you can slide like that. Okay, so. so D10, let's do D10. 
But wait, we're going to use d5 every time, right? Can you switch that to d5 for me, please? Okay. And for the cath lab setup, how much heparin are we always going to add to the bag? So the answer, the answer well, is zero. The answer is zero. Once we oh, get to the, the twenty five, because you guys are going to, yeah, because you guys are going to systemically, okay. you're going to anticoagulate your patients anyway, okay. right? To get your ACTs up to two hundred. So, so you're not going to awesome. worry about. It. So this literally, what right now? If I if I say grab me a bag of dextrose, what size bag would you grab? What can you grab right now? A liter. You're a liter. You should uh, have dextrose in here. No. Uh, yeah, we'll get dextrose. You have no dextrose. Right, you so mean like D5 dextrose? Yeah, I need D5. D5 water. I mean, we might come into the anesthesia workroom. Well, we, got, we need to have that somewhere nearby because every impeller case... You want me to run over there and see? That's okay. We, we can do it later. But, but every impeller case needs D5 water. Okay. And all you're going to tell it is how big a bag you grab. So these two won't change. This will change based on the size bag you grab. So D5. D5. Okay. I'm just curious. ICU, what kind of concentration? What I said I want the whole pharmacy thing with them. They're going to still use D5, oh, but the heifer, they're going to add 50 units per ml okay, to the so bag. The, okay, yes. <coughs> so we have that concentration that they use? Yeah, yeah. They can, they can, no, we are not with the pharmacy. Okay, okay. Yeah? That makes sense. Okay, any questions here? All right, so <laughs> if, does everybody agree that we have a, a 500 bag of D5 with no heparin? So go ahead and hit, hit done. It asks you one more time to confirm. Are you sure you're happy with those components? Hit accept. All right, and Pella's ready to go. So now there's, we have three more reminders to make sure that before, so before you put it in the body, you wanna make sure that you uh, pull an ACT. So basically once the sheath goes in, okay, here's my little reminder. Once the dilator comes out, okay, so we don't wanna anticoagulate this patient before you put a big hole in the body, right? Once the dilator comes out, somebody should ask the doc, what's your cocktail for anticoagulation? They can use Angiomax, you can use heparin, whatever you want to use, but and the reason I make a big deal is when a new device comes on, people tend to forget the basic stuff. You guys know how to anticoagulate a patient, right? But people tend to forget. So the trigger is, now that it comes out, what, your, what are you going to use to get my ACTs in? Make sense? Okay, second question. And when you settled up, did you confirm that there was volume coming out of here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's done. So it did purge the whole system, to your point, has no air because we confirmed that. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Last question, and I'll tell you a story behind this one. It says remove bag wire. So to get this into the body, you guys, this is all off the field. This is at the back of the table. You're gonna set this up and it's gonna be sitting in the back of the table. You're now still gonna be helping the doc. You're gonna help him take that six front sheet and upsize it with dilators to my 14 front sheet, right? You're gonna pull a dilator and get, give heparin. Then you're gonna take an angle pigtail, just like I saw the 15 there, I'm coming in this last case you guys did. You're going to put a pigtail through here, up around, into the body. 260 J wire. Right, with the J wire. And then over the wire it's changing. And then once, no, so once the pigtail is in the ventricle, right? Change the wire. You're going to pull that 035 wire out, you're going to put all 8 in, okay? So now this will be sitting in the ventricle, and it should be just like this, real nice, in the ventricle like that, right? Coming across the valve with my fingers, okay? So it's in the ventricle by itself. Then you're going to backload on the impella. Now here's the beauty of this. See this little dude here? So right now, go ahead and I want you to put the wire into the back load into the top. You do that just enough, you don't need a lot. Just put the back in there. I mean do you switch the front end? Is that the front? Yeah. Oh sorry. Come on, man. Alright, sorry. <laughs> uh, that was a test, that was a test. <laughs> okay. <coughs> hey, uh, I have a going. Resist the hey, okay. okay, pause there please for me. Alright, I want you guys to notice. So remember how I tell you the device? How it goes up and around the arch? Alright, so see how it comes up the aorta? Alright, so mm -hmm. where are we? It comes up the, yeah, it comes up the aorta and around the arch, right? Okay. So, Actually, this is a pressure line, so, pressure hole. Right, and the pressure is right back here, but oh, here's okay. what I want to show you guys. Right now, if this is coming up, so this is the belly of the catheter. See what this black line is? That's the belly of the catheter. This is the back. So if that wire came out here, if that wire came out here, you'd be scrubbing up against your, your carotids and your subclavians and all that too. You prefer the wire to be hugging the aortic root, right? 
actually rather have the wire come out right here. So let me show you this little trick that we teach. So right now, if, I, if you were scrub, if you're the doctor. I know, you bend it. Well, so I'm going to say doctor, right? Go ahead and pull the wire back. Until, right? pull Is back. that a big deal? Now, and then do this. Now push it forward. Boom. Everybody see where it came out? I want the hump, the camel hump. See where it came out here? Is that a big deal? Should well, but here's the, re the reason it's not a big deal is every impeller cat that this one was out, it's going to come with this lumen uh, already here. This is called a lumen cheater, right? So what you need to do is, well, you you to just fit it so you're going to feed the wire through the red tip, not that you're going to feed it through the lumen cheater, right? And then once it comes out, you're going to back it off and it's in the right spot. Okay? I don't be any questions. Well, yep. but, if, but if for some reason somebody did pull that out, okay? This is the way you do it, just like I just showed you. I would, right now, see the black line? Mm -hmm. I would hold here, well, I would hold here, and I'd take one hand and hold here like this, and I'd ask you, I want you to hold the pigtail with one hand, the pigtail, just the pig, and the wire. So look, now, now notice how, when I had you do that, boom, and you're in. Okay, so now it's gonna go up and around, and into the body. Okay. Up and around, into the body. Now it's into the heart. You confirm that the guide wire is out. So here's my quick story, and then we'll do this. No story. So, You're out of time. All right, this is the last, last quick story. Yeah, you'll like, you'll like this story. So I do this. Uh, so I, I cover. Oh, good. You're spinning. Okay. So here, here we're, we're. See how it's ramping up? It takes a few seconds, right, to ramp up? Well, and on purpose, because you don't want to draw. It's, it's, it's literally ramping up slowly. See how the leaves are pulling up? Yeah. And we got system glass, and we're, we're ramping up. So the reason I said pull the guide wire. My hospital, uh, Tripler Army Medical Center in Hawaii, right? We've done two or three cases with them just like you. I've had all these drills, we've trained them. They decided to do a case without calling me, right? They called me and they said, Joe, everything was doing great. It got in and we started spinning and all of a sudden it shut down. I said, what, what happened? So I started troubleshooting. And I'm like, this and it's nice. Well, we don't pull out the bench, but they go, don't worry about it. The wire's in. I said, I think I know your problem. You remember where the wire was? Uh, right there where the motor is? They got it in the body. They got it spinning and it just caught the wire and it locked. So I was like, that was their problem. Will it ruin the device at that point? Potentially, yes. Could, huh? This one didn't, fortunately. We were able to take the wire and restart it, but it could. It could. But that's it, so that's, but that's why we put the little cheaters on there. Okay, so leave it right there for a second. Okay, so, last piece of mind service, if we have time here. So, guys, remember I mentioned three things, right? So, right now, this is part of the performance. Okay, remember the three piece? So how am I performing? Which is right down here, right? What P level am I at? So right now I'm at P, P8, right? And I'm performing, let me pull it up just a little bit. Thank you. I'm performing right now, I'm getting 3.3 liters in systole and three liters in acid for an average. So the max is when the valve is open. Remember? So the reason this is flat is because this patient's in shock or basically dead. But if this, if this patient did have a heartbeat, if I squeeze that enough and play with it, right, this would basically respond to when the baby go. This would respond to when the see how it's trying to get into the pressure here? And it, it's gonna respond to the valve opening and closing. So what you're seeing is the amount when the heart's helping consistently and when the heart's not helping the acid front average. This is all about performance. So that's this P here. What's my flow levels? Is my motor current pulsatile? Because if it's not pulsatile, the patient's either dead or you're demonstrating it in a bottle, right? So there's your first P. Your second P is protection. Right now, what's uh, my purge pressure, my purge flow. Remember that protects the motor, right? Because we're pulling and that's protecting the motor. And the third is where am I? It will tell you right here where I am. It will tell you I'm in a good position or it will tell you that you're So basically, that's it. This thing right now is helping the patient. If we have time, I can go through the butt analogy here, but you guys just did a setup. This is literally all it would take to set this up and to get it in the patient's body. Questions? <laughs> I oh yeah. I'm with this. Time to set it straight, you know what I'm saying? And there ain't no half stepping. Word. I'm ready. Rapple stepping